vastness of space spins a tiny planet habited by millions of human beings. The very future of this delicate planet is in jeopardy and the reason is man's laziness and selfishness. Bit by bit, day by day, he is destroying the planet that he lives on. It's simple, planet Earth is getting hotter and hotter. It's not too late, we can stop it. I said, oh, it's getting hot in here. Must be something in the atmosphere. So we've all heard that the world is supposedly getting hotter due to global warming and the greenhouse effect. But does everyone know what that means? Do we know exactly what is going to happen? And is it really that big a problem? The sun naturally gives off heat radiation. Some of this just goes into space. But some comes to the earth and warms up the planet. This is our only natural source of heat and without it the world would constantly be in sub-zero temperatures. When this heat radiation reaches Earth, it is absorbed. The Earth then gives off some heat radiation of its own. This is radiated into space, but some of it gets trapped in a layer of greenhouse gases just below the atmosphere. It can't escape, so stays in the Earth's atmosphere, making the Earth just that extra bit hotter. With this happening over and over again, the Earth is sure to heat up significantly. So what are these greenhouse gases, and how did they get there? The atmosphere is made up of the following gases. 6% is nitrous oxide, 14% comes from CFCs such as aerosols, 18% is methane from things such as agricultural fertilizer, 12% is ozone which helps protect the earth from dangerous radiation from the sun, so this is good to have in the atmosphere, and a whopping 50% of all the greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide. Some of these gases are there naturally, like ozone for example, but most of the other gases were put there by us. We make those gases during our everyday lives through cars, factories and power stations. A recent study in Germany showed that 5% of Germany's total CO2 output was from domestic heating, 15% was from power stations and 20% was from industry and a massive 60% was from transport. Cars, lorries and trains are all destroying this planet of ours. The amount of CO2 could naturally be reduced by planting more trees. But we're doing the opposite. We're cutting them down to make way for even more polluting factories and roads. So all these things put together make up the greenhouse effect. So called because of the way the heat is let in, but can't escape. It's exactly what happens inside a greenhouse. Now we know what the greenhouse effect is. What will be the end result? Not all bad things come with a greenhouse effect. For a start, there will be more sunny beaches like this one. And many colder countries like the UK will have a much warmer climate. So we can have barbecues for longer into the autumn. There will be a few advantages to the UK, such as Mediterranean summers in the south and the ability to grow tropical plants and fruits. And a longer growing season in the north. With the hotter climate, countries that are already hot will now become unbearable and more deserts will form due to the lack of water. Arctic plants that need the cold climate will become extinct, but we will start seeing some more tropical plants and animals here in the UK. The hot weather isn't all fun though. The heat will cause a lot of the glaciers in the freezing Arctic to melt. This will cause more water in the sea, and with the heat the water will also be expanded so the sea level will rise by up to 5 metres. As this scene from the film The Day After Tomorrow shows, many of the world's major cities will sink beneath the waves. This map shows the UK as it is now, and what it will be like in 2050 if the predictions are found to be true. Several of the major cities that will be drowned or affected are London, Edinburgh, Middlesbrough, Bristol, Preston and Carlisle, they will all suffer severe flooding. Well, should we be worrying about global warming? The answer is of course yes. We need to do something to reduce the number of greenhouse gases we produce. This can be achieved by using cars less and taking public transportation. 
We can also use more renewable power sources instead of burning very polluting fossil fuels. And planting more trees will help to reduce the amount of CO2. The film The Day After Tomorrow shows what could happen in an extreme way if we don't do something to stop these greenhouse gases. For those of you who haven't seen it, here's a little taste of what the future could look like for this precious planet of ours. Something in the atmosphere 